Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. This is the Battle of Stones River on my reboot of the Confederate com campaign on Ultimate General Civil War. And uh, I have thought long and hard about this. The reason I haven't uploaded this battle sooner is because I've been trying some different strategies, been thinking through the way I wanted to do this. And the bottom line is this. I have tried what a lot of people swear by, which is the uh, kind of rushing up toward the objective and getting between the enemy and that objective rather than doing what was historical, which is what I'm going to do here. And what I've found is that because he outnumbers me by about 10,000 men and the scaling keeps it that way, no matter what, he's going to outnumber me by at least 10,000. The more troops I put into my army, the greater that scaling goes. It actually can get up to like 13, 14,000 men. Um, I can get there first. I've done it multiple times. I can get to the Nashville Pike east and west first. I can have my whole army parked on those objectives. And then for three hours, he just throws his whole army at me, and I just lose massive casualties. I've actually won the battle several times the first day by holding that objective, but in the process lost so many men that it just wasn't worth it to me. And so what I've decided to do is to go with my original strategy, which is basically to... Uh, spend day one of the battle just wiping out as many of his men as I possibly can and evening the odds and then reinforcing my troops on the second day and having a numerical advantage that I can then use to overwhelm uh, the objective. So that's what I'm going to do and I'll show you some of those highlights of that. And hopefully I can get around, I can use this cavalry to wipe out some units. I'm going to get myself into a position where I'm ready to attack and then we'll kind of take off with this thing and see how it goes. I've got a bunch of artillery parked up on this side of the objective here and a couple of units of infantry to hold him back. So while the rest of my force is getting into position, we're going to do this. Now this artillery is going to run out of ammunition before the battle gets too far along. So I'll have to capture some supplies and send them his way. All right, let's go ahead and get these guys in a position. Okay, so right off the bat, we're gonna go, go try and nab his supplies because with my strategy being one where I wanna try and weaken him on day one and just take out as many men as possible, a part of that strategy is making sure that he runs out of ammo before I do. So that as I'm going toe-to-toe -to -toe to him, with him and shooting it out, which is probably going to happen up here in the northern part, uh, he does so without adequate supply. Now, he's probably got some more infantry over here. I've got to be careful of that. Yeah, he does. All right, we're not going to be able to grab these other supplies, at least not right now. I'm going to keep my one unit of cavalry close because I think at some point those supplies will become available to me. So then here's my first but hopefully not my last opportunity to wipe out some units. and completely remove them from the battlefield. Which is all part of the goal here, which is all about just reducing his ability to defend on day two. All right, those guys are gonna get out of here, unfortunately. And I don't, I think if I try to grab those supplies, his cavalry will just come out and get them back. So that's not, not a real feasible option for me right now. I want to preserve my cavalry for later. All right, so we're on to phase two of the battle now, and uh, I'm going to do my best to gobble up this unit right here because he's the one that has stayed behind while the rest of his army retreats. Unfortunately, it looks like he started to break before I could get to him. So we'll see how this works out. And 
And once I, I get up here to the edge of these woods, which is where I think he's going to make his, his stand, so to speak. Um, Alright, once again we got dragged right into his lines, into his artillery. Uh, then I'll swing these guys down and start to hit, hit his line and kind of link up with them. Alright, so we found a uh, unit out here in the open, so we're going to take care of them. And bring Hatch over. And now I want to try and overrun and destroy these couple of batteries here. I'm, I'm trying to keep shifted over this way because if I try to extend my line too far, he's going to have more men than I do. And I just I can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on that large of a front. So I need to try and keep it condensed a little bit if I can. And then once I can drive these guys out of the woods, I'm going to send these captured supplies over to keep these batteries firing as long as I can. All right, so he dragged me into the woods, which is going to neutralize my cavalry's ability to wipe him out. Okay, so I finally wiped out that unit over there. I'm about to wipe out a battery here. Drove off some other units. Two batteries, actually, I'm about to wipe out. Remember, my goal is not to win on day one. My goal is to neutralize his ability to inflict massive casualties upon me when I assault that final position. I see he's got a unit coming around here on my right and I'm on my left and I'm hoping it's by itself because if it is then that's another one I can gobble up with my cavalry. So he started out at least so far in this battle with about a 4000 man advantage. I've got that down under 3. If I can get it close to even and then add my reinforcements for day 2 then I've got a winning strategy I think. All right, I waited until he fired his volley into my infantry, and now I'll come at him. And that'll be another unit that will wipe off the battlefield, even those odds even further. And so I'm just going to try to stay in these woods as much as I can and fire from those woods. That'll give me the best, uh, best chance to inflict casualties more than I, I take. What I want to avoid is moving forward right here. And he and he wants me to desperately, so much so that he's making sure I can see those supplies, that little game that he likes to play. And I'm going to start bringing some of this artillery over here. And we'll push up to the edge of these woods. Alright, so that one unit just dragged me all the way down here into the corner in the woods where I'm finding it almost impossible to wipe him out but eventually it will happen I've brought over a bunch of my artillery here into these woods and I'm just I'm not advancing too far I'm trying just to right now I'm firing his art my artillery on his to try and take out that battery and then I'll just try to inch forward and take out these brigades as I see them kind of waiting for my cavalry to get finished but it's going to take them forever down here you can see they're not even really causing any casualties at this point that's the problem with the with the wood so I'm going to actually pull out and, and hope that maybe he will come back out into the open at some point of course now he's getting shots at me but it's just a nightmare when you get your cavalry dragged into the woods you can't do anything to take him out all right, we're into phase three now, and he has decided that he's going to kind of come at me with everything he's got on this side. So I think I'm actually going to going to fall back. Now let me pause here for a second, because lo and behold, there are there's Mr. Supply once again getting himself into a position he probably shouldn't. So I'm going to drop these guys back fall back to a position right here I'm gonna grab his supplies because the AI while at times can be pretty smart at other times is ridiculously stupid and 
and this is one of those times. So we'll grab those, we'll build a defensive line right up here, and then we'll see what happens. Alright, I got those supplies, and it looks like I'm going to get to do it again, because here's another. And he's left just a couple of small units down here that I think I should be able to get with my cavalry. Uh, overall, the number now with all troops on the field on both sides looks like this. He's got me by about 8,400 men. So I've already closed that gap, and that should mean that the odds are fairly even when we get to the last day of the battle. So I saw an opportunity and I went for it. And I've already wiped out one of the brigades that was here. The other two are really close. I think all three of these guys are going to be gone when it's all said and done. Now I've, I've been losing a lot of cavalry, but the amount of destruction I've caused with my cavalry kind of makes it worth it. I almost wish I, had, I would have had a third one with them. And here comes that unit finally that I had driven to the edge of the map trying to wipe out. They're finally back out in the open. I'm going to give my cavalry a chance to rest a little bit. And then I'll deal with them. Meanwhile, I want to finish these uh, couple of brigades off over here. And there's one somewhere in my rear, but I'm not going to worry about him unless he shows up again. All right, we're going to wipe this guy out real quick this time. There, he's gone. Okay. So, out of curiosity at this point, looking at the numbers now, that uh, that once 13,000, or no, it was about 11,000 man advantage when it all started, is now down to about 7,200. More importantly, I've taken out a lot of his artillery. So now we'll just kind of consolidate. I'll start marching forward a little bit, look for other opportunities, but I think this is about how it's going to stay going into the assault on the positions in the latter part of the battle. All right, so I'm back in camp, and uh, both of my cavalry, after their wonderful performance uh, here on the first day of the Battle of Stones River, have reached two-star status. I'm not sure why this one's only showing one right here went over here it shows too but anyway uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm reinforcing my troops and I'm starting with the ones for whom I have the weaponry already in the armory because uh, I have a limited amount of money uh, but 7,000 available troops so show you where things stand right now I still have 7,000 more men that I can hopefully reinforce with and right now things are almost even so I should have about a 5,000 man advantage on the field. And if I do things right and use the uh, huge amount of artillery that I have at my disposal, hopefully I can even some more of those odds. So I'll finish getting refit and we'll get back onto the battlefield and see what happens. All right, so the odds are going to be pretty much even, which uh, I guess is fine with me since he started with a 10,000 man advantage on day one. So uh, I've got 120 guns to his 74. I think I'll start by trying to neutralize those. Uh, try to weaken and soften up the position as much as possible before I launch my assault. So my artillery is just not causing enough damage and I don't even see any of his artillery now. I'm shifting over and I'm going to assault Nashville Pike West first. He sees that and he has already removed several of his brigades and he's leaving Nashville Pike East kind of lightly defended so I'm not entirely sure what I want to do here I may hold back and assault that one after all if he's only gonna have three brigades up there that may be the way to go so these poor guys I'm gonna rush them back the other way now and I think I'm gonna start attacking both at the same time and then I'll wait and kind of decide and see where I'm making the best use of my forces alright so here we go uh, it's kind of interesting that I suddenly lost sight of all these guys when I started moving my infantry forward. I'm really not sure why that is. I could see everybody before. So we're going to make our way up this hill. 
Let's see if I can't overrun this position quickly. Now I'm sure he's got more than two brigades over here. Because we're, we're pretty even on manpower, so he's got to have them somewhere. Right now, he started out with like maybe 800 more men than me. Right now, it's still about 700. Obviously, it's going to go up here in a second from me assaulting these positions. Looks like Nashville West is going to be overrun a little easier than East. He must be holding troops back. There they are. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now the tricky part here is to try and inflict casualties on him where he's got these massive amounts of troops. It looks like this one's going to be driven back pretty easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause and I'm going to go ahead and bring up my guns and help, hopefully have them for support as I finish this off in the next hour. All right. Nashville Pike East got overrun pretty easily. I'm a lot more concerned about West, especially because he's got so many men back here and all his artillery is parked out here now. Um... So I've just got to be careful and make sure that I keep a solid battle line right here in the edge of these woods. Try to make sure I quickly plug any holes in the line. Get my guns up here on the hill as quickly as I can. Start firing down on him. And then we should be good. Um, oh, Griffin, stop facing that way, dude. So numbers wise, he started out with about 800 more men than me. Uh, the number's only about 600 now, so surprisingly, the casualties have stayed fairly even despite the fact that I was rushing up a hill into a fortified position. So I think I might be okay. All right, it's looking good, and I'm, I'm keeping it on uh, the fast sim here because everything's going really well. Now I've got my guns up here. Uh, I've driven them off quite nicely in both areas and honestly this is so much better than when I just rushed to the Nashville Pike in my original playthrough uh, this has gone much more smoothly and it's gone much much more in my favor just wiped out another battery so we're just gonna I'm gonna let this kind of play out and then we'll see where things are gonna stand going into 1863 I believe the next major battle we'll have coming up will be Chancellorsville. And I know that's one I'll be heavily outnumbered in, but I think there's three three minor battles before Chancellorsville, which uh, hopefully is plenty of time for me to drive down his force pool even more, if that even matters. And I'm increasingly convinced that it doesn't. Part of me is tempted to rush forward and try to destroy his army here. I've got a 1400 man advantage and it feels like it's going to only progress from there. So if this allows me to, I may go ahead and press this a little bit. But I'll probably stop and save just in case. So, no, it stopped it right there. Alright, so, alright, this is a little... A little misleading because I added 8,000 men, so I actually had about 11 to 12,000 casualties. 14,000 for him, uh, but as heavily outnumbered as I was, I will absolutely take that. Uh, the nice thing was all these supplies that I grabbed, which definitely make a big difference. Uh, officers, uh, again, it's kind of confusing because I did lose some officers, but they're not showing up here. Uh, because they were all replaced so I don't know how that really all kind of does that but let's go ahead and take a look at where things stand now and I'll play a couple of these minor battles uh, before I end this particular episode of the playthrough 
or of the reboot. I'm at the place now where politics and medicine are both maxed out. So then I can start focusing on other things like uh, economy, um, maybe logistics to try and get some more supplies out of things. So we've got Blackwater River, Rio Hill, which is, oh, that's a fun one. Uh, First Franklin. So First Franklin actually gets a bonus because I uh, won the Battle of Stones River. He's at 95 to 100,000 in his force pool. He was way, way above that last time. I think he was at like 150 to 160 at this point. So um, looking pretty good there. I have a feeling Chancellorsville is still going to have massive amounts of men on the Union side. He's got 81,000 now, and that's even before I start uh, replenishing my troops. So... That's going to be an ugly one, no matter how you look at it. But hopefully, over the next uh, couple of battles, I can reduce that number. But we'll see. Let's dive in. All right, time to press on. We're going to get into First Franklin. First Franklin is one of those battles that there's a real opportunity to completely wipe out his forces. I'm hoping that translates into a lower number of enemy when we get to Chancellorsville. Uh, so this one, I'm not bringing any cavalry just because it, they, they really just get in the way, especially when he um, he gets these reinforcements, uh, which are the mounted infantry type, and they just cause nightmares. Those and skirmishers cause nightmares for my cavalry when I'm trying to wipe units out. So I thought I'd be better off just to go with large numbers of men along with a couple of batteries of 10-pounder parrots. And I'm just going to go right up the left side and try to force, uh, kind of push down against him. Uh, he's going to get reinforcements up in here that I have to be careful of, but otherwise I should be able to push right through. Right now, um, he's only got about 13,700 men, so I outnumber him about 2 to 1. So we'll get into position, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to come under some pretty heavy artillery fire for a short time here, and Mahone's unfortunately going to take most of that. Tyler will take some too. But I just want to keep on moving, get up into here, and build kind of a bubble right here. And then I can start causing these guys in the fortifications to route. I can get at the artillery. I can drive him off. And then I should be in a pretty decent position to just kind of roll the table on him. Well, as I said before, the skirmishers are super annoying. And they do kind of tend to mess with my plans. I probably should have sent some skirmishers up to deal with him as well but once I drive them off my plan will be in a good position to start working and as you can see the first units already being routed so I just have to keep pressing up while I'm also pressing out at the same time and there's those tempting supplies that I'm not going to attempt to go after yet I'll have an opportunity to do that later on All right, now I know he's got some more skirmishers and that going after these supplies might be a mistake right here. But that's why I'm only sending skirmishers to deal with it. I also know he's going to be getting these reinforcements from up top that I have to be wary of. But we've driven off the last bit of the fortifications. And I think I am going to grab these supplies. Awesome, now let's pull them back. I destroyed these skirmishers and here's where I got to be careful because I don't I don't remember exactly where this mounted infantry comes in at but I want to have adequate forces to deal with them when they come onto the field so that they don't start roaming around all over the place and just cause me nightmares for the rest of the battle I also need to start bringing my guns forward these 10 pounder parrots have a nice range so I don't have to leapfrog them nearly as much as I would other types of artillery. So I don't want to. I don't want to hold, move too far forward on the on my left. I want to make sure that those guys stay in front of me. Okay, here they come. Oh boy, I couldn't have timed that better. I I sat right in front of the spot where he came through so if I had moved even a little bit further ahead they would have come in right on my rear so that worked out rather nicely 
And now we're just going to have to play the inch forward game. Hope that he doesn't ride through my lines. But I think I should be in relatively good shape here. Right now the numbers look like this. Now he's got his full complement on the field, I believe. Um, so he's lost about 1,500 men. He's also lost almost half his guns. I've lost about 1,700 men. But this should start working more and more in my advantage now. Only f six minutes to go on the timer, but this is one that will let me keep going for a while. And I'm absolutely going to take advantage of that because I'm starting to get him bottled up. Slowly kind of uh, closing the noose around him. He's down to just 12,500 men and only 14 guns. So his artillery is almost non-existent at this point. I'm going to keep moving everything up. I shouldn't have to move my artillery again at this point. And I'll start bringing everybody down from the north. No, we're not going to finish yet. This is a great chance to annihilate his army without suffering too heavy myself. i got to be careful here. I'm a little light on the right side. Most of my strength's up on the left. So I've lost, I've lost about 3,000 men. I'll probably lose one or 2,000 more at least. All right, we've got him bottled up into a pretty small area now. And he's down to just 11,500 men and six guns. The only problem now is I don't have enough strength on the right side of my line. Oh, and look at that. He's got somebody out on his flank. So I don't quite have him bottled up the way that I should. And I'm suffering some casualties on my right because of it. So I've got to shift some units over to counter this. I'm hoping if I can play my cards right, I can capture some men and get some, uh, some more into my force pool that way. Right, so I guess this is where he's going to make his stand. He's still got those pesky mounted infantry. They, they keep coming up and s just taking little swipes at me. But I'm finally getting some volleys in on him. So it's just kind of this chase that I have to do to keep finishing him off. I've lost about 5,500 men now. He's down to just 9,000. I really want to wipe him out if I can. Well, I finally got him cornered, all except for one pesky unit of mounted infantry that went up to try and take the objective. I sent a couple of brigades back there just to protect and make sure that didn't happen. But once I wipe out these last couple units, then we'll see what the numbers look like, the final numbers. Because I've got these last couple of units trapped. He's down to 4,700 men. This is where I hope I can capture some. So I definitely lost a pretty heavy number of men that I didn't need to, but this is what I wanted to do, and that's why I was willing to take those extra casualties. Two left. One, okay, we captured the last one. All right, so I lost 7,700 men, but I was able to completely annihilate his army, all except for about 600 men that were left there at the end. So grab some supplies, grab some guns, a uh, bunch of I'm at the place now where I have so many major generals that I'm going to have a, a number of major generals in charge of brigades but that's just the way it goes sometimes so I'm up to 83 reputation I've got one career point uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting some of this into well let's see I can go a little more army organization for now um, 
I got 13,000 men sitting here. His army number actually went up, which drives me nuts that that happens. I completely annihilate an army, and the number goes up. So it's like no matter what I do, I pay for it. So we have Blackwater River coming up next, and then Rio Hill, which is just a nightmare. And then we'll be into the Battle of Chancellorsville. So I've got 20 brigades here, so I'll get set up and ready to go for that one. Alright, so this is what it's going to look like going into Blackwater Heights, but I think this video has probably been long enough already, uh, just with those two pretty major battles that I just fought, and this one's going to be a pretty uh, intense one as well, because I'm going to once again try to destroy as much of his army as I can. I'm only going to have him by about 6,000 men, but uh, I think that should be enough to do the job. So we'll get into that one next time, as well as the Battle of Chancellorsville. It may be a few days. It'll probably be later on this week. But as always, I welcome your input, your observations, your comments, your questions, any and all of those things as we get into these battles. I appreciate all of that input. Please hit that thumbs up if you would to let me know you want to see more of this. And we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.